back with you today. Today I've got a calculus problem. This is one my students have been asking about and I've gone over in one of my classes. What I'm going to show you how to do today is how to find length along a curve, or distance traveled along a curve. Let's say I've got an object that's moving on, some, on, a, on a path here. Let's make the path a really simple one. Let's make it a parabola, so y equals x squared. So what I've got now is, a, is an object traveling along this path. This might be my object right here. I've got an egg. So the egg might be moving along that path. Well, in real life, that egg could be a lot of things. It could be maybe a rocket going up into space. It could be a car going around a turn. It could be lots of things. And the question is, if I start at a point here, right there, and I end up at a point right there, that distance s from, from first point to second point, where's a terrible line, isn't there? Let's try this again. Okay, you get the idea here. Anyway, if I'm going along that curve, now it, it's hard to draw S right over the curve. So I'm trying to, this S indicates I'm trying to go along the curve from the, the starting point to the ending point. All right, so if I'm going to do that, what's, what's the length of S? How do I find the length of S? Well, it's tempting to try to approximate and say, well, if I know this distance here where that's X0 uh, and that's X1, and I could figure that out, eh, hypotenuse, but that's not going to work because this really is a curve. Here's what's going to happen. Let's divide this curve up into little segments. Okay, there's my segments. Let's find the length of each one of those segments and then just add them up, right? So you can see where we're headed here. Eventually we're going to let the, the length of those segments get really, really, really short. But for the time being, let's do this. Here's one of my little segments. Okay, and just to make sure we know this is the uh, length along the curve, I'm going to make that one a different length. And I'm going to call that delta S. Okay, that's the length of the segment, which is one of these things right here. There's a segment, there's a segment, there's a segment. So I'm just going to keep going along. And I want to assume those segments are so short, this really is a straight line. Okay. Well, this is the change in height. And there's the change in horizontal distance. Okay, so that, that doesn't look too bad so far. We're just headed for Pythagorean theorem here. And so I can say, make sure I stay in frame here. Okay, I can say delta s squared equals delta x squared plus delta y squared. Well, that's, that's the Pythagorean theorem. That's not too bad. Let's go back up here and keep going here. So delta s is the square root delta x squared plus delta y squared. All right, that's not too bad. Well, let's do one more thing here. Um, this isn't the most useful form. I'm going to change this a little bit. Now, up to here, it's fairly obvious. The next change is mathematically simple, but maybe it's not obvious. If you wouldn't, wouldn't, or wouldn't have thought of this on your own, don't worry about it. Somebody did, and that's all we need to know. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide this by delta x. Okay, and as long as I do the same thing to both sides of an equation, it's still an equation, so I'm good to go here. All right, do that. So I've got delta x squared plus delta y squared as before. So far, I've, it, does, it isn't obvious where I'm headed here. This looks like a complication, not a simplification. Just bear with me. This is going to work out. Now, 1 over delta x is also equal to this. Okay, 1 over the square root of delta x squared. And this looks even crazier than this. This is Where am I headed with this? Well, let's do this. Let's pull everything inside the radical here. So it looks like this. This is delta s over delta x. Okay, one last step, and I have room to do it here. That's going to be 1 delta y squared, delta x squared. And believe it or not, that's where I want to be. All right? I've got to do one last thing here. So far, I've got these as being great big segments. Well, big enough. Big enough that they're not infinitesimal. These are finite lengths here. Well, the whole point of, of calculus is that we're, lo we're uh, looking at their slopes or areas, but we're dividing things up into very, very, very small segments. And in the case of integration, we're adding them up. Right, well, so right now, these are finite lengths. That capital delta there 
means that's a, you could actually assign a number to that. Well, I'm going to go do one more step here. And because I've got my little board, actually, can I do this? I could do this. If delta x approaches zero in the limit, in the limit, then ds over dx, 1 plus dy over dx squared. Okay? In the limit, what that means is, this is, this is the word the mathematicians use, this is the phrasing they use, to say that my segments have gotten very, 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 very small. In fact, they've gotten arbitrarily small. Now that means they're as small as they need to be, but not zero. And that's pretty much the, the central concept of calculus. If it takes you a little while to get used to that, that idea, don't worry about it. It took mankind, I don't know, 50,000 years or so to come up with the founding ideas of calculus. And then it took another several decades for people to generally accept this idea. If it takes you more than five minutes, don't worry about it. You don't have a problem. It just means you're paying attention. So here's the expression that describes length along a segment, but not just along a finite segment, an infinitesimally small segment. All right? the, dis the difference is that with, with finite, I could actually assign numbers to these. These, the dy, dx, ds, I don't know what those numbers are, and I never will. But it doesn't mean I can't work with them. I push symbols around all the time. Sometimes those symbols uh, cancel out of equations. So in, in concept, anyway, this is no different. So I'm going to clear off some space on my little board here. And let's do something with that. Let's do this. Let's, let's say that I want to find the distance along that curve from the point x equals 0 to x equal 1. Let me draw that up here again real quick. OK, that's y equal x squared. I'm going to start out at x equals 0, and I'm going to go to, I guess it's all right, x equal 1. Find that distance right there. Well, now we know how to do it. This is easy. Now, let's write this out here. I'm going to write this out really big, or bigger anyway. And there's one big thing I want us to note here, all right? This right here, in fact, I'm going to write it slightly differently. It's easy to, to look at dy squared over ds squared and think that's a curvature. It's not. It's the slope squared. All right? It's not the curvature. If this were really curvature, if this were really the second derivative of y, it would be d with a superscript 2y over dx squared. That's not the same thing. It's a very small change in notation, but it's a big, big difference in meaning. So remember. This is the slope squared. It's not the, the slope of the slope. Big difference there. So I know y equals x squared. From that, I know dy over dx equals 2x. And dy, make sure I stay in frame. There we go. dx squared equals 4x squared. Now, again, make it clear here. That's not curvature. If it was, this would actually be a 2. But it's not. All right, so let's just plug that in here and say ds equals 1 plus 4x squared, ds over dx there. I'm going to make one more change. Then I'm going to multiply through by dx. Remember, it's just a variable. We can treat it like a variable. It's a variable that has some very uh, specific properties, but it's a variable. So I'm going to put that dx right there. Now, how do you make those little d's all go away. Well, those, those stand for derivatives. Those are infinitesimal lengths. The way we can make those go away is to say we're just going to simply add those up. And the way we add those up is integration. So I'm going to go from 0 to s there. And I'm going to go from 0 to 1 there. Right? s, because I don't know what that is yet, another variable. Eventually, it's going to be a number. don't know what it is yet. So until I know the val value of that number, I'm just going to leave an s there. Well, when you integrate, that turns out to be s. And I, now I have over here, just to write this out one more time, 1 plus 4x squared dx. Now, you can do this by hand if you want. I cheated a little bit and ran it through Mathematica. And I got, let's see, 1.47. Eight, nine, dot, 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 that went out for a while. Okay, so that's the length. 
to go from x equals 0 to x equals 1. Do I believe that? How would you check? Well, the way you check is to say, well, one way to check, if this were a length of 1 there, according to this expression, this would also be a length of 1. So 1 that direction. Let me get rid of this here. That length is 1, and that length is 1. Well, if that really were a straight line, the length of that line would be 2 square roots of 2, so it would be approximately 1.414 something. Well, this has a little bit of a curve to it, but not a whole lot. The fact that it has a curve means that the distance from there to there along the parabola is a little more than if that were the hypotenuse. So it should be a little more than 1.414. Well, that's a little more than 1.414. Sounds good. Let's do one more sample problem here, and uh, I'll let you look at that real quick. What if we were going around the circumference of a circle? What's the distance? Let's find this distance, and then we'll be done. Okay, this is a circle with radius 1, all right? And that's the upper right quadrant, so that's 90 degrees of a circle. How, how, uh, what's the distance across there? Well, let's see, the, if that's, the radius is 1, the circumference of the entire circle is 2 pi. The circumference of half a circle is going to be pi. We know s equals pi over 2. Does that, does that work out? Well, let's see. y squared plus x squared equals 1 is the equation of the circle. So let's see. y must be 1 minus x squared, square root. And dy dx, that, by the way, that's also 1 minus x squared to the 1 half. Right? I, I generally mess up a lot less when I do it that way. And so what I'm going to wind up with here is that's going to be 1 half. I'll get my head out of your way here in a second. 1 half minus 2x, all right, so there's that. I use the, let's see, the chain rule to get that real quick. And let's clean this up just a little bit. That 2 and that 2 cancel out, so I'm getting minus x over 1 minus x squared, the square root. So there's the derivative. What's the derivative squared? Make sure I stay in frame. Okay, dy over dx squared is x squared 1 minus x over 1 minus x squared. There we go. All right, so I've got all the parts I need to calculate that uh, length. So s now equals the integral again from 0 to 1 because of the endpoints I've chosen. And all i got to do now is say 1 plus that expression right there, x squared over 1 minus x squared, and integrate that whole mess with respect to dx. You, you do that and you get very cool. Let's see. 1.5708. There's some other, other numbers out there. And that indeed is pi over 2. So not only have we learned how to calculate distance along a curve, just as a little side benefit, we actually found a way to calculate pi. As long as I could, oops, boy did I mess that up. Sorry guys. There, now I'm happy. My apologies. Okay, so not only did we learn how to calculate distance along a curve, also learned a way of calculating pi. If I were to double this, I would know what the value of pi is. So there you go, two for one deal today. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.